Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. And what I have here is a very special vehicle. This is the 2024 Dodge Challenger GT All-Wheel Drive, the last call edition. Because the Challenger will be no more right after this. A little bit of a bittersweet moment for me because this is my first and probably last Challenger review. So again, I would like to thank everyone here at Dodge Jeep Ram here in Edza Green Hills. Today is their 4th of July celebration here in the showroom. And what a way to go out for my final video here that I will produce with this all new Challenger. So I did my Jeep Wrangler Sport and Ram Rebel 1500 Tesla review. So check it out on my channel. This is one of the entry models. There are no more V8s available at the moment. It's only for this GT all-wheel drive models. This Challenger is a bit special for me because I did tours of all of the competition of this vehicle. There are three of them. And for the looks alone, up to this day, this is one of my favorites because it's so big, so humongous as a muscle car should be. But for this GT all-wheel drive, I will show you immediately. Since I did say there are no more V8s available, this is the only one you can get. But it's very familiar to me with this engine because this is powered by a... The same Pentastar engine that you can find with the Wrangler JK, which I did a review of. So this is the 2.6 liter naturally aspirated V6 engine that produces 304 horsepower and 362 newton meters of torque, mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission. And unlike with all of the challengers out there, this is pretty unique. This is the only one you can get as an all-wheel dive system. And I found out only that this is the last call edition because of this plaque right here on the right side. A little bit, again, of a bittersweet moment for this car. This is the final one you can get. And surprising, being a V6 model, there's still a hood vent for air to cool down the engine. And to close this hood, I mean, it's so tall, you have to slam it quite hard. Richard Howell used to own one when this was launched back in 2008. And... I love that car to my heart. That is the SRT Hemi V8 only. I wish we can still get that model here. But for this GT all-wheel drive, as a last call and probably the last ever piece here in what the Philippines as brand new, I wouldn't mind getting this as a V6 engine. You get LED lights all around. And I love all of the circular lights. The looks of it has been pretty much the same since its inception back in 2008. And pretty unique with this GT all-wheel drive version because there are chrome slits. Over here on either side, Challenger emblem here on the left and a GT1 on the right side. That's how you can tell this is the GT V6 all-wheel dive model. Banana splitters, I will not say anything further than that. But the gun clearance is pretty low. I think this is around 122 to 132 millimeters. It's pretty low but it's pretty standard in this uh, segment. And on the side profile, this is such a long and huge vehicle. And I like your side mirrors are mounted here on the door. I think that's too... Uh, Improved aerodynamics and to reduce wind noise here on the B pillar. And unlike the V8 models, what I've discovered too, yes, you still get very big wheels and tires. So these are running on 245, 45, 20 series tires and wheels. But for the rear, it is exactly the same. It's no longer the stronger type of tire like what you get in the V8 model. Since again, this is an all-wheel drive vehicle. My favorite part of this Challenger is the rear quarter panel. That is such a classy look. And here at the rear too, pretty much the same. And surprisingly, being the GT base model, you still get a spoiler-ish over here. Along too with a reverse camera. Oh God, that rear is so cool. You get LED lights as well, including repeaters. Pretty much the same like the ones in front. The same design since its inception back in 2008. And surprisingly, for a V6 model, you still get dual exhaust pipes on either side. And open the boot up. I forgot how. This one? Okay. Phew. I thought I missed it. Right. Compared with the competition, this is actually one of the largest boots you can get uh, in this segment. So this is your total boot space. And you can literally fit a golf bag right here in the, the boot. It's amazing how big this car is. It's not like some other... Oh, there's even a space saver donut type tire underneath. Your battery is here in the back. And yeah, this is what I like with this car too. Despite the bigger dimensions, you expect some things to be small like for the boot and for the passenger side. More on that uh, later on. Dodge did a very good job of maximizing the length and width of this vehicle for all of their creature comforts at least. Oh yeah, nice fuel filler cup over here too. It's all chromed out. Now this is the interior of the 
Dodgy Challenger. Finally got to sit in one of these. Okay, it's pretty okay for a muscle car since it's pretty much been the same throughout its life. So here in the door card, as well being a two-door, it's a really, really long door. Your door handles are just down below. As well, these have Alpine sound systems on either side of the door. Oh, sound pretty good too. Uh, steering wheel, nice, soft and chunky. And you get paddle shifters and buttons here at the back for, I think, for your volume and other bits here for the cluster. Electronic. Tilt and telescopic adjustments for the steering wheel. And if I got to turn that on, the infotainment system. So it's, this is, I think, around 7 or 8 inches only. I will not demo most of it, sadly, because I do not have the key. But I've seen this system already. I think it's more or less the same like what you get in the Ram Rebel. So again, if you want a full infotainment demo, check that. Uh, review out here on the left side you got your light adjustments including your tailgate button i barely show pedals on my channel so these are the pedals and this has a foot brake that's really really old school i was expecting a manual handbrake uh, here in the middle so that's a big surprise compared with the rest of the pony cars in this segment in the middle you get a digital display along too with your analog tachometer and speedometer i will miss that thing this again pretty much the same since it's released and it's so special to see one of those once again and sitting here overall yes this is a long wide vehicle yeah, you're gonna watch out for the hood. It's so long. And the uh, visibility is okay somewhat if you're already accounted for the hood. But the blind spot, yeah, you may have to watch out for that. Nice Fiji material all around here in the dashboard. And then here in the middle. And get your engine start stop button. Numerous buttons here for your climate control. Even a super track pack and sport function. So despite being a V6, I know these are still uh, what you get in the V8. So hopefully... If there's be a chance in the future, I'll be able to dive this. Uh, let's see how this performs compared with the V8. I have not driven a Challenger ever in my life, but I would happily start with this uh, GT V6 model. And two, you get phone connectivity and instrument cluster adjustments here on the left side and cruise control functions here too on the right side. So there's few blanks over here. So I assume they're all available if you get the V8s and above. I think the 392 Scott Pack will be my pick of the range. So, glove box, there's literally three of them. It's amazing. Um, it's a nice gimmick. I wish it's just a bit wider, but it makes up for it. Look at this air conditioning vent here on the right. There's even a Challenger emblem. That's so nice. <laughs> even though this is the GTV6, at least they kept some of the nice things here for the base model. Now, here in the center console itself, you get your gear shifter. There's a plus minus in the correct position, like a race car. Two cup holders. And here in the center console box, it opens to the right. You get Two USB ports, an aux cord, and a 12 volt socket just inside. The space is just alright too, but I don't see any USB-C ports at all. And the seats here too, leather mixed with Alcantara style. And the bolstering, I mean, you see, you can see there's a lot. So get ready, of course, if you're gonna hone this around. Sunglasses holder, uh, halogen lights, visor, you get vanity mirrors with lights too. I already see the impending doom. Oh no! Okay, the extent, I, despite the extension, too, there's even another extension over here, a plastic one. So, all right, double pass with this. Good job with that, Dodge. Uh, microphones here on either side, just to confirm, on either side, too. Yeah, very good. Whoops. Yeah, so that's about here in front of this Challenger GT. Now, what I really like about this vehicle is when we go to the back seats. It's on again. Now, getting here in the rear is... Actually, not too bad. And this is why I like the Dodge Challenger. If I were going to pick one against the competition, look at the space. Fit room is actually really good. Uh, leg room is pretty all right too. Half of my arm cannot stretch my head all the way down, but not too bad. Head room, huh? just the skin of my head. Like, I have enough, like, two or three inches left of head room. But that's not bad compared to the claustrophobic ones against of the competition. Usually, I'm already hitting the windscreen already slouching here in the rear. But this one, the Challenger, you can sit here upright. That's what I like with this uh, Challenger in the first place. If you're planning to carry uh, four or even five people, it's not too bad. I mean, the transmission tunnel is really tall. But sitting in the middle, if ever only... Again, not too bad. I don't have to slouch that much, but you're already hitting here for the, I think this is for the third brake light. I think above here, a kid or small people can fit here in the back easily. Not much stuff here. I mean, get only speakers here on either side, but let the soft pads at least here for your elbows. 
two air conditioning vents here in the middle and two map pockets too. The seat here is pretty much the same like the ones in front. Leather mixed with Alcantara. Right? The practicality is a big surprise for me with this Dodge Challenger. So yeah, that's a quick walk-around tour of this uh, Dodge Challenger GT all-wheel drive. So for the cost of all of this, since this is as well the last call edition, this one stands at 4,490,000 pesos. It's a little bit more expensive than the competition. But if you really want something special, I think this is the car to go for. And if you want a proper family car, not the bold guy, uh, <laughs> this is the way to go for. I mean, I don't feel claustrophobic. The windows are big enough. And yeah, as a long trip, as a GT car, this is perfect. So yeah, that concludes my walk around tour of this Dodge Challenger GT all-wheel drive last call edition. Again, I would like to thank everyone here at Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Edsa Green Hills, and to Miss Kate for making this all possible. These are our contact details. And today's the first day of the 4th of July celebration here in the showroom. So if you want to uh, test drive more after the celebrations here, they are all available. You may contact Miss Kate for hope you guys like and subscribe. And I will see you with more American cars on my channel. Goodbye.